Okay, let's look at an example of uh, um, exponential Fourier series. This is an example from the textbook where given the following periodic function it has a period of pi and it has an exponential decay from 0 and pi and then repeats for over all time. And in this interval for, for, for t between 0 and pi the, the function is given by this expression, e to the minus t over 2. Okay. Um, so uh, from the graph we can see that the, the period is pi and so f0 is the reciprocal of that, 1 over pi hertz, or omega0 is 2 pi f0, or just 2 radians per second. Um, we can calculate our, our dn coefficients using our integral definition. It's 1 over t0 integral over t0 interval of x of t e to the minus j 2. It's n omega 0. Omega 0 is 2, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. 2 n t dt. So it's going to be easiest here to do the integration um, over the, the 0 to pi interval. So, 1 over pi. And in that interval, I've got an expression for x of t. So I can just plug that in. It's e to the minus t over 2 in that interval. And then again, times e to the minus j, 2 n t dt. Uh, I can combine these exponentials and, uh, and carry out that integration over, over t. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise. Uh, but we get that the dn values are 0 0.504. I've evaluated a constant here that appears over 1 plus j for n. Okay. And so the magnitude of the dn would be 0 0.504 divided by the magnitude of the denominator, which is uh, 1 squared plus 4n squared plus 4n squared plus 4 n quantity squared, so that's 16 n squared, and then the angle of my dn r angle. The numerator, this is a real number, so that has angle 0, so I'll have 0 minus the angle of the denominator, which is the inverse tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. And uh, in order to, to sketch these, at least by hand, I want to make a, a short table of the first few amplitude and phase values for different values of n um, with n equal to 0. Evaluating this, I get 0 0.504 for dn, so that's its magnitude and the corresponding phase angle is 0. At n equal to 1, I and you can evaluate most of your calculators. You can just plug in this complex expression directly um, with n equal to 1 and, it'll, and then have display the result in polar form or exponential form. And you can get the uh, amplitude and, and phase directly at 0 0.122 and an angle of minus 76 degrees at minus 1. Get the same amplitude value, the opposite phase angle, and then at 2, 0.063, we can see these are falling off with increasing n, and the angles minus 83 degrees, and at minus 2, the same amplitude component, an angle of plus 83 degrees. Uh, so just a Oh, kind of a rough sketch of these. Um, we're 
versus omega. Omega is 2, so our, our fundamental frequency is 2 radians per second. The second harmonic is 4. And I've only calculated these um, out to the second harmonic term, minus 1, minus 2. Of course, they go on forever. Sorry, this is minus 2 and minus 4. Um, and the zero component has an amplitude of about 0 0.504. Um, um, the first harmonic or the fundamental is 0 0.12, so on this scale it's roughly about right there. Okay, it would be the amplitude of those complex exponential terms. And then at, uh, at n equal to 2, omega equal to uh, 2 omega 0 or 4. Um, it's about half of the preceding term. And of course these will continue to get smaller as we go out to higher and higher frequencies. So this is the amplitude spectrum of the signal. Don't confuse this with the magnitude response of a system which we've talked about um, in the previous chapter. The magnitude response of a, a system is related to the transfer function um, um, of, of the system. Now we're talking about the um, you know the, the spectrum of a signal um, as opposed to a system and then similarly we can also plot the phase response from the values we have here 0 to 4 uh, actually as, as n becomes very large here this denominator is going to approach negative 90 degrees First component is minus 76, and then minus 83. These would continue again and get closer and closer to uh, negative 90. The positive phase angle terms are going to, I'm sorry, the, the negative n values are going to approach uh, positive 90 uh, as n continues to get uh, more negative. So. This is what the phase spectrum uh, looks like. Um, let's talk about, about Parseval's theorem then for uh, this particular signal. We can calculate the, the total power in x of t. We can get a, uh, an exact value for that by uh, carrying out the integral in the time domain. 1 over t0, 0 to t0 got to integrate the squared function. So in this case, plugging in the values, it's 1 over pi, 0 to pi, and we have e to the minus t over 2 squared, which is e to the minus t dt, or that's minus 1 over pi e to the minus t, evaluated at 0 and pi, or p of x then is 1 minus e to the minus pi over pi, uh, which is approximately 0 0.30455 watts, if, assuming x of t here is a voltage or current signal. Um, let's calculate the power in the frequency range um, 0 to 4 radians per second. Here we'll include, this includes both the positive and the negative frequency components. So it's d0 squared plus 2 d1 squared plus our second harmonic was at four radians per second, but then um, the third harmonic is at six radians per second. So that would actually be outside this interval. If we compute the sum, we get 0 0.2917. Uh, uh, you could compute this for you know, including the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic. This sum should never exceed 
uh, should only approach uh, the total power in the signal, of course. You notice when we include the, the, the first two harmonics, we got 0.9 out of the, the 0 0.30 total power. So the percentage of power within the first two harmonics actually is, is pretty significant. You know, that, this ratio turns out to be 0.958 or 95.8%, so close to 96% of the power contained in, in this particular waveform is, is included in the DC term and, and the first two harmonic terms.